Hi, this is Mrs. Zhu, and today we're going to be working on our practice test. This is a <clears throat> practice test that is going to cover slope, graphing, the coordinate plane, um, equations of lines, the equation um, specifically y equals mx plus b. <clears throat> All right, problem number one. Take some time to look over the graph and what it means. And actually, before you begin this video, make sure that you also try to finish all of the worksheet before you watch it so that you can check your answers. And that'll be the most beneficial to you rather than just copying down all the answers as you watch the video. The test will be on Monday. Number one, based on the graph, we can see that <coughs> um, this line right here represents a max and how, how much he charges and then the uh, kind of like the dots right here represents how much Leah is um, charging for babysitting now it seems that right here um, is where max starts to charge more than Leah so the answer to that one will be C Okay. Question number two <clears throat> is asking me to look for where the water level will be between 1030 and 1130. Here's 1030 and here's 1130. So between here I see this line <clears throat> and the water level because it is um, going from here to there. It's going up. So that would mean that the water level is increasing. And number three, I know it's a little bit tiny here to see. We're looking for the graph with a slope of negative 0.5. So first of all, I know that it's negative <coughs> 0.5. Now, fractions are usually written as rise over run. So I'm going to change the 0 0.5 to a fraction. We should know that fraction and memorize that by now. That's negative half. Okay. Um, because it's negative, it already gives us a clue that it's going to be a downward sloping. So to help you remember, we have slope man and his eyes. And this is the part of the eye that we're focusing on his lazy negative eye and it's downward sloping. Or um, I could also draw a uh, big E, I'll, a little guy right here, big E, call him big E, or little J. And then um, if he's going up, and that's positive, so I definitely don't want A to be my answer. This one is going down okay. C is going up, so I definitely don't want C, and D is also another one going down. <clears throat> because the slope is negative 1 over 2, when I go, I'm going to make, I'm going to basically create stairs. I'm going to look for the rise and the run. Now, I know it looks really tiny, but here are some possible dots that you could have gotten. Okay. Looks like you're going down 1, right 2. Okay. If I look at this graph, there's some dots here and some stairs. It looks like I'm going down 2 and right 1. <clears throat> So I'm looking for negative half, and negative half is down one, right two. So that would be the answer B right there. D would might be a common mistake in case it, if you flipped your run, if you accidentally did run rise, which would have been incorrect if you accidentally did that. Number four, <coughs> we're looking for the graph that shows the chart. And here my chart says that there's zero hours that costs seven dollars now that's kind of funny huh like how can they charge me seven dollars for not doing anything well maybe because <clears throat> you have to first pay them seven dollars for just renting the truck but then every single hour on top of it you could see that there's a two dollar difference between um, every hour so that just means you are only really paying two dollars an hour um, but if you first rent it at the beginning, you still got to pay that $7, no matter how much time you use up. Um, so if I look at A, it seems like at the zero, if I cross right here, that's going to be about $7. Here at the zero, it's right at the zero dollars. So I definitely don't want that. If I look at C, zero is also at the zero, and I don't want that as well. And then for D, there's nothing even at the zero, and I don't really want that. So A would definitely be my answer. It's important that even though you first looked at A and you found that, oh my gosh, that's probably the answer, it's good to look through all the choices 
to double check that in the other choices are definitely not correct. Number five, we're looking for the slope of this line. Now there are several ways to find the slope here. First of all, you can do the rise over the run and start to count. Okay, so you can count rise and then you can count the run. Okay, um, or you can use the formula. The formula says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And because there's a lot to count, I might actually use the formula in case I count wrong because if the numbers get past 5, 6, or up to 10, then sometimes we just mess up and it's just natural for us to do that. <clears throat> Using the formula, I can use the points for my formula. I have negative 6, negative 6, and then I have 6 and 5. Now, I'm going to make a little chart just to kind of help me set it up. I have y's on the top and x's on the bottom, and that's because the y's are the ones that rise, and the x is the one that runs. And we're talking about the axis here when we say x and y. So I'm just going to kind of plug those numbers in from the, from the um, points. So that's the first point. I'm going to have negative 6, negative 6 for both x and y. This is my x and this is my y. So my 6 is my x and my 5 is my y. Then <coughs> I'm going. my formula tells me I'm going to subtract them in between. So I could set it up like that, and this gives me negative 11 over negative 12. Um, that's my answer. However, a negative divided by a negative is actually a positive. And just to help you remember here, and if you have trouble with the adding, subtracting, use your T for teams. And for the negatives and positives, we have our little triangle. So if I covered up uh, a negative and a negative, what I'm going to have is a positive. So my answer is D. Okay, or if I count, I have go up 11, and then I go right to 12, and that's how I can also get 11 over 12 by counting. And hopefully we counted correctly. And even looking at the answer choices, they kind of give us a little clue sometimes. Number six, we're looking for the graph that represents y equals 3x minus 4. It's very tiny. We always begin at the B. So if I look at my B, remember that my equation is Y equals MX plus B. So the number before the X is my M. The number after the X would be the B. If there's a negative, like the negative 4 here, I take the negative with the 4. So my B is negative 4, and here my slope later is going to be 3. So I'm going to begin at negative 4. I'm going to see which line does that. The A choice uh, looks like it's kind of down in the negative 4 section, so maybe this one. B, uh, the negative 4, no, negative 4 should be down here, but it's up here, so definitely not B. C is all the way up here when it should be down here, so that's definitely not correct as well. And then D should be negative 4, but it's like all the way down here, maybe like negative 10. So that's also not right. So I didn't even have to do very much after that to get that my answer is A for number 6. Number 7, <coughs> we're looking for the slope of this line. And uh, this, here's a picture of it. They say that it crosses at negative 3, 0. And it crosses at 0, 1 which is exactly the dot here and the dot here. Now I could, um, again, do rise over run and count. Or if I want to actually use the uh, slope formula, I could do that as well. So let me show you both ways. Here it would be an easy counting one up. So that's positive one. And then counting one, two, three to the right, positive three. And there would be my answer. Okay, if you use the formula, you could have had 1 minus 0 over 0 minus 3, which is 1 over negative 3. I'm sorry. Um, it was a minus minus 3. So it was 0 minus negative 3. And a negative negative becomes a positive. So that was a positive 3. Or you could have had 0 minus 1 and negative 3 minus 0, which is negative 1 over negative 3. And this is the same as positive 1, positive 3, because two negatives make a positive. So you'll still get one third. Number eight, we're looking for <coughs> a line in the diagram that crosses uh, for 
the x, y -ax, x axis at 3 and then the y axis at 2. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the graph in question number 7 to kind of show you. Um, the x at 3 would be here because that's my x. Okay, and then my y at 2 would be right here. Okay, so if I were to connect them and then draw a line, okay, I'd be able to find the slope. So here I would do a rise and then a run to get do that, to get that. Now do I have to um, necessarily do it this way? No, because again, we could use the formula or we could just draw the picture of it. Here, um, my slope looks like it's negative sloping, so I definitely do not want to pick the answer A or B because it's, if I put my man here, it's going down. And so if I count the rise, I'm going to count one, two, up, and then one, two, three to the left. One, two, three. And that's going to give me a negative three because I went to the left. So that's how I get the answer C. If you accidentally got D, it's because you did run rise. And that's not what we want. We don't want run rise. It's supposed to be rise over run. Just like our song. Rise over run. <clears throat> M stands for slope. Slope stands for M. It's rise over run. Okay, go ahead and skip uh, 9 and 10. We did not learn that, so you don't have to do that. But if you are curious about the answers, um, number 9 is C and number 10 was A. Okay. Just going down to number 11. Number 11, the answer is C because if I line up 4 gallons, and if I look at this dot over here, um, the 4 gallons or it's gonna cost me $10, and then I can go ahead and just divide those two numbers to get 250. 10 divided by four. Okay, that's how I do that, in case you're wondering. And then number 12, um, I'm able to look at 30 here and here and get 120. So 30 minutes is 120 calories. And if I double that, that'll give me the um, just per hour rate. So my answer is D. Number 13, we have the growth of um, <clears throat> tree growing two inches per month. Two inches per month, okay? That's really a representation of a rate, and a rate is a representation of slope, okay? So my slope would automatically just be two because what you're going to see on your graph, if I just draw it down here, if I have months here and inches here, you're going to see a steady um, growth each month of two inches. One month, two inches. One month, two inches. One month, one month will pass two inches. One month will pass two inches. One month will pass another two inches. One month will pass another two inches. So what you're going to see is two inches one month, two, one, two, one. So the rise is two and the run is one. That's why the answer is two here. And please ignore A. I'm not, I think maybe there should have been a two down here, but don't know what really happened with the printing. <clears throat> Number 14, uh, we're looking at, uh, let's look at Mike. Um, he sold two cases and it seemed like he sold 50 bars. So if, there's, if we're looking for how many candy bars are in just one case, then we would simply divide 50 divided by 2 and get 25C. <coughs> Number 15, the answer is going to be B. 16 will be D. 17 will be C. And the last question will be D. And if you have any more questions, um, I think maybe... Uh, both of these were pretty easy, and if you're uh, maybe the maybe we'll talk about number uh, 16 in class if you need to. Have a good rest of the weekend.